Hi everybody, so a wind belt, I mean essentially they're a ribbon fluttering in the wind. When they first came out it was suggested that they were more efficient than a traditional wind turbine. Well, that's a little suspicious and it was later proved that they weren't and if you look at them you can understand why they wouldn't be. And they wouldn't be because, well, they flutter. And fluttering means that a lot of the energy is lost along the length of that ribbon. And what might be better is if the ribbon was rigid and only the ends were allowed to flutter. And of course that led to the wind bar, which was just a development of the wind belt. Now as we discovered, that wind belt actually works just as well, if not slightly better, if you rotate it 90 degrees. And that seems a little counterintuitive until you start thinking about the wind bar and something like the Flettner rotor. Now the Flettner rotor is just a solid rod. When the wind hits it, it sets up a force tangential to it and of course that rotor spins. That idea of a force being tangential is what was encapsulated in the Zephyr energy machine. Now, this is a company that's come out with this wind bar that is supposed to work on two main principles. One's called transverse galloping and the other is called vortex shedding. Transfer galloping happens when a wind hits a curved surface then you get a reduction in pressure as it travels over that curve. Because it's a bar shape and not actually a rod, we get an area of vortex which is atmospheric and then we get a pressure difference and of course that creates a force and raises the bar. Then it will continue to raise that bar until something pulls it down and then it will drop and raise and drop and so it will oscillate because of this transverse force. Equally, the vortex shedding creates areas of pressure differential behind the bar, causing it once again to oscillate. Now, the key to it is that the bar shouldn't be circular. You could make it square, but you would get different effects at the corners. And what Zephyr did was create this oval bar. Now, there are only really four parts to it, so I thought I'd give it a go printing it. Drew this up in Tinkercad and printed it off. Now, I printed this off of my Elegoo Max, so if you've got a smaller one, because this is 300 uh, millimeters long, if you've got a smaller printer like uh, Elegoo 3, which is 225, you'll need to scale this down so it fits. But I printed this off on my Max, and there is the bar, and it has this. So we can put a magnet on it, it goes that way up. And what we're hoping to do is attach some springs to that and get it to flutter. So I've created a base unit with some spring attachments and two side arms. The side arms go there and there. We could put a couple of springs on and that goes in between those two. Blow a wind over that and we should be able to get that to flutter. And there it is together, so it's stunningly simple. Now, apparently, or so as Zephyr say, the key to this is actually those springs right there, and there are four of them. And for me, what I've done is eight millimeter diameter, 25 millimeters length from a 0.8 millimeter wire, and put four of them in there, and amazingly enough, it works. I mean, I'm going to do close up in a minute, you'll have to watch it because it just oscillates. But as I say, Zephyr will say that the key is in these springs and they're being mighty coy about that which is no real surprise but let's give it a go and see if we can see that oscillate Okay, so that actually worked, which I'm fairly amazed about because I made this from, well, stuff I had lying around. These springs are probably a bit stiff for this, but I had them, so I decided to try it with no attempt at optimization. And we didn't get nearly the same oscillation that we saw in the Zephyr machine, but 
it's not going to take that much tweaking in order to find a much better rate of oscillation. So things like the length of the bar, how round the bar is, that sort of stuff. These springs in particular, we need to change those out and try a few more. And I do have some on order. But I will put these STL files up and the link is in the description. Should anybody else want to join in and, and give it a go on those optimizations and see if we can get a good degree of bounce out of there. Because you can get a good degree of bounce out of there, of course, we've got a uh, wind turbine. So I'm pretty pleased that I got anything out of that. And I hope it's um, of interest to you. If anybody wants to help out, jump over, get those files, print them down and do some experimenting. But of course, your alternative is just to wait until I do the experiments and then copy what I've done. But I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Watch out for more on this. And please do remember to like and subscribe.